Jane Abbott. I work at the high school. Cynthia Rhodes. I'm the kitchen manager at Crocker Farm. Mary Fuller. I work at Mount Meadow. Oh, Bob Ackerman. <laughs> <laughs> Laura Quinn. And I'm Bailey Bean. Thank you. So, Cindy, would you please uh, read off the statement? Nice and easy. And okay. read the names of those who signed as well. Okay. As the food service workers for the Amherst Elementary and Amherst Pelham Regional Schools, we continue to oppose the outsourcing of our jobs and wish to see that decision reversed. We did not choose to end our employment with the school district. And we emphatically reject claims by the superintendent and the school committee members that we are satisfied with the current situation. The different options each of us has had to select do not represent our best interests, but rather the least worst option of three unfair alternatives. Claims that just a few food service workers are dissatisfied are simply untrue and represent an unacceptable attempt by the superintendent and the school committee members to mislead the public. Cynthia Rhodes, Mary Fuller, Linda Robinson, Kate Perry, Darlene Avery, Shelley Snow, Cheryl Rhodes, Cheryl Titham, Daphne Jablonski, Jane Abate, Ruth Barrett, Donna White, Rosie McAlunas, Pam Flynn. Thank you. So that's 14 out of the uh, 20 women. Could you just and the other ones I didn't get. Could you just briefly explain why the others that you wanted to give their names? Who oh, the other women? Right. I haven't even approached any. Okay. All right. I was still getting signatures at 10 to 60. Okay, so mm -hmm. you have managed to get 14 of the signatures. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Okay, uh, maybe Mary, would you please read over the statement? <coughs> First, I will introduce myself. My name is Mary Fuller, a single divorced parent of three children who attend the Amherst Middle and High School. My children have been in Amherst school system all of their lives. I myself went to Pelham Elementary in Amherst Regional. I am the class of 1986. I am one of the 20 lunch ladies you have heard about. Yes, I am worried about my job as well as that of my co-workers. My wages are low enough making me qualify for state and federal aid, and my children get free breakfast and lunch. I have been working in the lunch program for 16 years and under contract for nine. The lo loss of longevity pay would be a tremendous hardship on me and my children. There has been much talk and also misleading statements. As I was reading the bulletin this week and read letters from non-supportive people and what they had to say about the kitchen workers, I was saddened. Some are under the impression that only a few of us are upset since we are not present at all meetings. As Mr. Husson's spouse stated, she thinks because, and I quote, the remaining 15 have been, been notably absent, presumably because they recognize they have been offered a reasonable, other town employees might say generous deal to support them during this transition, end of quote. These are some of the reasons more lunch ladies have not been able to attend all of the meetings. One, cost of gas and some live in different towns as far as Gill and Munson. Uh, two, some have second jobs. Three, some have s smaller children and don't have child care or cannot afford to pay for child care. Um, we are the lowest paid employees in the school system, all women, all age 40 and older. There have been cuts made in the program for many years before Chartwells came into the picture due to severe cuts in the budget. The school committee came up with a subcommittee to find a new vendor. Yet when I asked if I could serve on that committee, I was told no, it would be a conflict of interest. Most of the discussions concerning the lunch ladies were made behind closed doors in school committee executive sessions. As lunch ladies, we had no idea of what was going on until we were called into meetings with only one or two days notice and were given the new severance package information.